Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about how to program your ESP8266 using the Arduino environment. So what will we cover in this video? This video is aimed at beginners, so we'll start with installing the Arduino IDE. We then need to add the ESP8266 software to the Arduino IDE. After that we'll cover installing the device drivers, and then we'll run an example sketch to make sure everything's working. After you're finished following the steps in this video, you should be able to program any ESP8266 based development board. I'll link to a few of my favourites in the description below. Two devices you won't be able to program though is the ESP01 module and the standalone ESP8266 module. The reason why is because these require an external programmer and for beginners you're much better off sticking with a development board. The first thing that we need to do is download the Arduino IDE. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. The IDE is available for Windows, Mac and Linux, so download the installer that's applicable for your operating system. When you get to this page, you can click just download or you can make a contribution if you want. After the download is finished, just click on the installer and follow the instructions on screen. There are some options that you can change, but you can just go with the default ones. Towards the end of the install, you'll be prompted to install some device drivers. You can install these. They aren't the ones we need, but they could be useful again. The next thing we need to do is install the ESP8266 software. There's instructions for this on the ESP8266 software's GitHub page, and I'll link to that in the description below. If you scroll down, there's an Installing with Boards Manager section. I'll cover the steps in this video, but we do need to grab this URL from it, so copy that to your clipboard. Open the Arduino IDE and go to File and then Preferences. Paste in the URL that you copied into this additional Boards Manager URLs. If you already have one there, you can click this button on the side and put the URL on a new line. After that, click Tools, Board and then Boards Manager. After this loads up, you can search for ESP8266 and then you click Install on that. Once it's finished downloading and installing the file, you want to check that it installed OK. So go to Tools again, Board, and you should see a list of new ESP8266 modules. Next thing we need to do is install drivers so we can program the boards. These boards normally use one of two chipsets, the CH340G, which is found in the Wemos D1, node MCU board and basically any Arduino clone board so you might even already have this installed. The other one then is the CP2104 and this is found in more expensive boards such as the Adafruit Feather Huzzah and the Wemos D1 Mini Pro. If your board's not on this list you can look it up online or else you can look on the board itself and check which one you have. The CH340G is rectangular and the CP2104 is square. You'll then need to download and install the driver for whichever chipset your board has. I'll link to both of them in the description below. Next, we're going to program a sample sketch to the device. See what port numbers you have available and then plug in your device. Any newly available ports is the port you want to select. You then want to select what board that you have. So if you have a Wemos D1 Mini, for example, select that one from the list. After that, you want to go to File, then go to Examples, then go down to ESP8266 and we'll select Blink, which is the most simple example. This sketch will just turn on an uh, onboard LED on the ESP8266 for one second and then turn it back off again for two seconds and repeat that over and over again. I always recommend installing a simple sketch like this first when you get a new board, just to make sure that everything's working okay. There's no point doing something complicated and then not knowing whether you were able to program the board at all. Another thing we can set is the upload speed. 921600 is much faster, but 115200 is much more reliable for me, especially on the CH340G. You then want to click on the upload button and let the sketch compile and then upload to your board. Uploading a sketch at 115200 speed should take roughly 30 seconds. Once the sketch is finished uploading, you should see a done uploading message. Hopefully, when you look at your ESP8266, you should now see a blinking light. 
Check out some of my other videos for examples of what you can do next with your ESP8266. I think these boards are amazing. They're so cheap and some of the things that you can do with them is just incredible. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and if you have any questions please feel free to ask in the comment section below. Thanks a lot.